hey everyone welcome back to the channel hope you're having a fantastic day this is samir your host and in today's episode of how to build an editor with emacs list we're going to talk about property and association lists i had an idea earlier and i wanted to share uh, share it with you um i've got good feedback about this video series so far uh it seems to be a good way for beginners to uh, learn about emacs and emacs list especially for uh those who want to actually learn uh, how things work and, you know, start uh, from the basic fundamentals. Um, but the main goal of this video series, the, like the long term goal is to actually uh, start developing uh, FG42, the editor that I'm working on. Um, so I thought it's going to take a long time to get there because like there's so many things that we want to talk about elis with self different aspect of elis and emacs and everything but like um while this, like, while this video series uh, video series can be helpful for uh, some of the folks um some people might already know about the basics and everything it might be more interesting to uh, start developing some features on fg42 on a stream on camera so that that's the idea uh basically every now and then that i'm going to start working on a new feature or i don't know enhancement or uh, anything to that sort i'm going to uh, like pick a date and time announce it in on twitter or youtube community like i, I didn't use youtube community uh feature uh, like before i didn't use it at all actually so i'm not familiar with it hopefully it it will be useful but if you think you like if you're not on twitter or you can't use youtube communities for some reason please reach out to me i'm going to uh, we can arrange some uh, arrange something to uh give you a notification when uh, about the uh, stream and the date and time and basically on the stream i'm going to uh literally code and implement a new feature for the editor um i think that can be a good idea as well but it would be an experiment i'm going to do it for a few times to see whether uh, it's a good idea or not um that's the whole idea with that being said let's move on and talk about today's uh topic so before we can talk about property lists and association lists, we, we need to understand EQ function versus equal functions. Um, we have two functions in Emacs list, like we have many functions, but these two are important for the sake of our uh, sake of discussion. Uh, EQ and equal, both of them are similar in the uh, in the sense that uh, they check whether or not two object are similar to each other or not but eq checks two like checks two object to be exactly the same uh object basically like uh it checks two objects to be the exact same thing right but equal actually check the structure and the content it doesn't care if they're the same object or not so it's it seems easy at first, but the like one of, for example, the main case that might make you a little bit confused, at least it made me confused before, is in case of strings. So when we use EQ to compare two strings, even though the content is the same, but two string literals are not the same object, right? So if we do EQ foo and foo as a strings, it's going to return nil because these two are two different objects. Uh, it doesn't care about the content. But equal doesn't care about like whether they're actually the same object or not. Like, let's say roughly same object in memory. They reference the same piece of memory or not. Equal actually only cares about the structure and the content. So two strings with the same characters and same order are the same, right? Um, but why do we need to know about EQ and EQ equal? Because in property lists and association lists, uh, under the hood, these two type of lists use one of these two functions to compare the keys together. 
we'll see that in action <clears throat> in a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's start by property list. First of all, both property list and uh, association list, both of them are just um, like normal lists that we talked about in the previous episode. But we treat them differently. Uh, we have functions that kind of operate on the, these two types of lists in a different style. Um, so a property list is a list of paired element, elements. Each of the uh, pairs like associate a property with a value. So the property, or you can think of it as a key, uh, comes with a value associated to that uh, key, basically. Um, in a property list, the order of elements, uh, order of pairs, actually, not elements, doesn't matter. So a, a pair can end up in the at the end of the list or uh, like in front of a list, it doesn't matter. Uh, when we want to look for it, we'll, we'll look at it in a sequence, right? Um, and th that's because like keys in a property list ha has to be unique. You can't have the same key appear twice in your list. Usually uh, property list in Emacs, actually the name property list comes from the fact that uh, Emacs uses this type of list to store the properties of text. Uh, so for example, whatever you see right now on my screen, uh, all the text has a list of, all the text have a, like a list of properties, uh, property lists attached to them, describing like the different aspect of that piece of text and how it should be rendered. Like for example, like the color, the size and things like that or symbol uh, properties. We're going to talk about text properties like in the future, maybe far future, but we might never get the chance to talk about symbol properties. So I give you an, like a brief overview. As like we can attach P list or property list to a symbol. That P list that we attach to a symbol act as a, like a metadata for that symbol, wherever like we can actually retrieve that metadata later and look into it whatever that we are, like stored in that metadata is up to us for example a, a real example is actually for functions uh the if i'm not mistaken the docker string of a function is actually has its own key in the metadata of that function so uh that's how we, like elisp actually treats the uh docker strings um, that's the way Emacs uses plist, but you can use plist whenever uh, it makes sense for you. That's why we're talking about it today. Okay, to, sh to show you an example of um, a plist uh, or property list, as you can see, um, it's just a normal list, right? We can treat it as a list. It literally uh, is no different than any other list. Um, Right now, it has a like it should have um, it should have an even number of elements. In this case, like there's a keyword A, number one, a string B, number two, C, and so on. Actually, we didn't talk about keywords before, so it's really simple. Anything that has start with a colon, any symbol that has starts with a colon is a keyword. Basically, there are symbols. So if I do type of this thing, right? As you can see on the uh, bottom left, it returns symbol. But since they start with colons, they're classifies, uh, they classify as um, keyword, like other lists like closure has keywords as well. And we can use keyword P, like the predicate keyword P to see whether something is a keyword or not. As you can see, colon A is a keyword. Uh, People usually usually use keywords as like the key in a key value data structure. Uh, you, you see it uh, quite a lot in an Elisp code. It's a nice way to um, it's like under the hood. It's just a symbol, right? Um, so we define our uh, our as a property list as a, like a normal list, and as you can see. No, like up up until now, there's no difference 
between a property list and a normal list. But the difference actually comes in when we, which we want to use some of the PDS functions. There's like three functions that we're going to actually five functions that we're going to talk about today. Um, PList get or lax PList get, PList put or lax PList put, and finally PList member. Let's just start by PList get. All it does it is that you pass it the uh, the list that you want to use as a property list and the key or the property name that you want to look up in that list. For example, right now we want to look up the value for key A. If I evaluate this, as you can see, it returns number one. To show you the um, list as well, right? So it returns number one. It means here is my P list. Go figure out what is the value of key colon A or property colon A. If I do the same with uh, B, which is an a string, which is a string, it returns nil, but B is not nil here, right? So this is a pair, right? This is another pair. This is another pair, and you see where I'm going with this. Um, but we kind of expect, not like we expect number two to be the result of this expression here, right? But it returns nil. The reason is, plist get by default uses the eq function right so it checks for uh like th that key has to be the exact same key or same property in the list since two string literals are not the same it doesn't return anything in order to use equal we have another function called lax plist get it works exactly the same, but it uses e equal instead of the eq function to compare the keys together, right? So as you can see, it returns number two. So what happens is when we use plist get or lax plist get, like we we're walking the list from the beginning till the end to find the first key that matches the key that we're looking for, and how we compare them is on plist we use eq on lax plist uh, get we use uh, equal function another example like another function is plist put and obviously lax plist put they update the list for us um and we can put like new pairs into our list um so let's add actually oh yeah let's add a new key keyword z with a new like a value in in, uh, in our list as you can see again it add it adds the uh keyword z at the end right but how, it doesn't matter how many times i evaluate this uh expression it just like the keyword z ends ends up once in our p list as i mentioned the keys has to be unique the keys have to be unique but what if i change the like I evaluate another expression and I put another value for the key Z. As you can see, it actually changes the value of Z without any other modification, right? So that's how we can actually change the value of a key inside our list. And finally, lax plist get, uh, last, sorry, lax plist put uh, uses equals. That's why we can actually change the value of uh, keyword string b and the final function is plist member the reason that plist member exists is uh, interesting you you might think actually uh, here you saw that like plist get returns nil if the key is not in the list but you won't know whether that nil is like the value of the key or simply the keys not exist in the list that's why we have plist member if the value is nil it returns it plist get basically returns the name but if the key is missing it still returns the nil so we don't know whether keyword g exists or its value is nil we don't know but with plist member if the key exists it returns the pair right so j uh is nil right it does, actually it doesn't return the pair it, it returns a sub list from that a specific member um 
but if the key if the key is missing it returns nil so we know that g is doesn't exist but when we use j yeah we know it exists but the value is nil that's how plist member works um to show you a, like a an example of where we can use plist in real world like i'm not encouraging you to do to do this it's just an example right i thought it would be a good example because i'm going to talk about the rest and like introduce rest to you as well so let's say we have a function we learned about function in the previous episode uh we define a function here called foo excuse me this function foo gets just one parameter that parameter name is art but we use something called like actually to be honest i don't know like what the like at ampersand rest is called but let's go with ampersand rest right so this keyword here not keyword this ampersand rest here has a special meaning it means whatever number of argument uh, parameters you want to pass to this function they all have to end up in this one parameter called args as a list right so what we're going uh, what we're doing here is just to print out the args itself and then um, use it as a p list right since p lists are just lists we can actually look look up uh, different keys in them right now we are trying to get the value of a key or a property name a called name uh, and return it right so if i define this function and then call it it should return bob as you can see it returns bob um and if we look at our messages as you can see uh this is what the actually this is what the org contains right so it's just a fun it's uh like whatever we pass to that function let's add more stuff blah another list right um whatever we pass oh i forgot to code this whatever we pass to this function they all are gonna end up in a list and that list name would be args as the only parameter to that function right so sometimes you see functions uh, or uh, macros in elist code that people actually uh, use property lists to i don't know set different values of um as parameters to that function that's a use case there's like so many use cases but i just wanted to talk about ampersand rest here uh so you know how ampersand rest works okay um that's it for property lists as you can see they're pretty straightforward and easy to use uh just don't forget that whenever you, you you're looking up a key you're actually walking uh you're iterating the list that same um, actually that's the same for association list okay talking about association lists they're quite similar to property list in um like in the fact that they map a key to a value but the data structure itself is a little bit different so we had pairs in property lists that were like flat uh, pairs in association list we have cons so uh, an a list is just the list of cons each con as uh, each console uh, uh, as we learned in the previous episode each console on its own is a pair of key and the association associated value uh, the car of each console is the key and the cooler or the second value or the rest of the values are the associated value right unlike the property list the order of associations or pairs like each pair in association list call, is called an association the order of associations matters in a p list uh, in an a list sorry uh, so we can have like multiple uh, values for the same key but the priority is the one that comes first right and actually that's a good um, mechanism to add to 
uh, a lists as we're going to see in a, a little bit so let's go in with another example here we set the value of uh, the variable y here to another list again as you can see it's just a list but this time each element is, is just a concept do you remember about the dotted notation we discussed in the previous episode so this one is the car and this one is the cooler of oops, 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 oops of this console right so let's evaluate this and as you can see why uh it's just a list but there's a bunch of functions that help us to actually work with association lists again I, I, i'm trying to emphasize that both property and association lists are just lists so any function that works on lists works on these as well but there's like extra functions you can use to um, kind of use the concept of key values with these data uh, with these data structures um, the first function is called asoc or i don't know how you m might pronounce it um, basically it just lo looks up a key in our um, a list we give it a key and the a list and it look it up it, and it return, returns the concept not just the value right so if i want to use for example if i want to use the value i have to do cuder of this thing and it would be one right but if i want to use it with a with a strings actually it works with a strings as well oh one thing i uh, i forgot to mention is that in order to learn more about each of these functions, it's better to look at their doc strings. For example, asoc by itself uh, takes a, like a test function as well. You can provide a test function. You're not limited to eq or equal. You can actually write your own test function. The default, it's in, like here, obviously it seems to be equal because it works with uh, strings, right? So that's how it works. You can look up the pair, uh, pairs using asoc. There's another function called rasoc or r asoc. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry. Uh, it works the same, but it looks up the based on values, not based on keys. So you give it a value, and it looks up uh, cons uh, that has that value, right? So we can look up value number one or value three. Uh, it's really simple the other function is ask yeah this function is similar to asoc but it uses the eq function by default so looking up keywords are the same but you can't look up strings because again eq when we use eq two liter string literals are not the same we have a list get similar to plist get Oh, actually, I'm going to show, uh, talk about it at the end, actually. Uh, alias get works the same as plist get. Again, you give it, the, give it the key and the list you want to look it up into uh, in it, and it returns the value. But it gets a default value as well. So if the default, if the key is not in the list, it returns the default value instead. So we don't have a Z key, like a key Z in the y list but if we actually do it this way it returns blah because z is not in y and i if i re like remove the default value it returns me right so this is how we actually um, look up a stuff in an a list like there's plenty more functions but like these are the most important one you can look at the documentation and uh, elist manual to learn more but we talked about the cons fun function i'm going to talk about it again because that's how you can add a stuff to an a list so let's say we have y1 um we use the cons fun function to add a new cons as the new head of the list y right easy so y by itself, as you can see on bottom left, it starts with key A. But when I like use cons to 
uh, add the new console including Z and value 30 to it, the like Y1 would start with the Z key, right? And if I try to look up the key Z in our a new list, it returns uh, the console with the value 30. If I do it again, but well, change the value, right? As you can see uh, on the bottom right, bottom left, sorry, the new value is in our, basically in our uh, list. So let's look, have a look at our list. As you can see, the value is 31 now. That's how you add stuff to a list. Again, since they're just list, you can use any function that can operate on list with a list or p list. That's what we did here. I included uh, three links to the manual for a list, p list, and like a comparison between these two. Um, this is it for, uh, for today, folks. Oh, I want to show you just as a reminder how you can look up the docker string for each function uh, when you do meta x or in a pc alt x you can say describe function or as you can see on my screen uh, the short key is control h and then f um, when you do this you can actually type any function name that you want let's say p list get and you can actually read the documentation um, to learn more about uh, each function, just as a reminder. Um, that's it for today, folks. Um, if you have any uh, feedback for me, any suggestion, recommendation, please reach out to me. I really love to see you um, getting involved in this process. And let me know what you think about the stream, um, the streaming idea. If you like what I'm doing, please consider leaving a like and share my work with other people. Uh, it would help me a lot to grow the channel and make better content. Hope you enjoy uh, your day and see you in the next episode.